All right, we're talking a little more conceptual now. We uh, just went through some math. Let's take a break from that. The accumulated adjustments account and the other adjustments account. Let's talk about what these are. In an S Corp, the accumulated adjustments account, the AAA account, and the other adjustments account, the OAA, are used to track the company's accumulated earnings and profits, as well as any adjustments to those earnings and profits. Now, these accounts are important for tax purposes, as they're going to help to determine the tax treatment of distributions to shareholders. The AAA account, this is used to track the company's accumulated earnings and profits that have been generated since the company became an S Corp. The AAA is increased by the company's taxable income and decreased by distributions to shareholders and certain non-deductible expenses. The balance here is important for determining the tax treatment of distributions to shareholders. Now, if you're thinking and you're looking at this and you're thinking, hey, this sounds familiar to what we saw in C Corps with retained earnings and we can't go negative retained earnings. We start uh, having return of capital, dealing with capital gains, very similar to what's going on here. If the balance in the AAA account is positive, distributions to shareholders are generally considered tax-free returns of capital until the AAA is depleted. Again, really dealing with the retained earnings account, all that stuff within corporations, very similar to the process, essentially just a change of name because we're dealing with a different type of entity. However, there will be slight differences we'll go over in questions. Once the AAA is depleted, subsequent distributions are considered taxable as ordinary income to the extent of the shareholder's basis in the company stock. It's kind of like filling up the buckets as I've described in uh, past instances of seeing this. If the balance in the AAA account is negative, distributions to shareholders are considered taxable as ordinary income to the extent of the shareholder's basis in the company's stock. Now, the other adjustments account, the OAA, this is used to track certain adjustments to the company's earnings and profits, such as adjustments for differences in accounting methods or for gains and losses recognized for tax purposes, but not for financial reporting purposes. The OAA is increased by these adjustments and decreased by any subsequent adjustments that may occur. The balances in the AAA and the OAA are reported on the 1120S. We're gonna have a nice little screenshot to show a little bit about that, but nothing too critical. This is more informational than anything. However, you may see a sim where you have to uh, adjust these amounts. Shareholders use the information reported on the form to determine the taxable income and to calculate the tax treatment of distributions received from the S-Corp. Again, this is very similar to what we saw with C-Corps in terms of filling those buckets on what is dividend income, what is going to be considered return of capital, going back to C-Corps. In summary, the AAA and the OAA are used to track an S-Corporation's accumulated earnings and profits and any adjustments to those earnings and profits. These accounts are going to be important for determining the tax treatment of distributions and are reported on the tax return. Let us go and see that now. Nothing too wild. Again, like I said, uh, this is nothing crazy. It's just the Schedule M1, Schedule M2. We see here, this is dealing with reconciling the income or loss per the books with the income per the return. So this is book to tax. This is where we have all those adjustments, normal ones, depreciation, things that are included, tax exempt interest, permanent differences, temporary differences, all those good things. Then here is the M2, the analysis of accumulated adjustments account, dealing with all that and the other adjustments account. So take a look, just nothing too wild. Again, kind of just a general familiarity with this will go a long way in helping you with other questions. All right, so just beating this to death a little bit more. I'm comparing this to retained earnings. I kind of mentioned that prior, but let's really compare it because that's a great way to remember the differences. So the AAA account, it's a tax-related account used by S corporations to track accumulated earnings and profits. As I mentioned, it is similar to the retained earnings account for C corporations in that it reflects the net income of the corporation that has not been distributed as dividends to the shareholders. Generally speaking, for corporations, what increases retained earnings is net income. What decreases it is dividends. Remember all of that, that is financial accounting 101. However, there are some important differences between the AAA and the retained earnings account. One key difference is that the AAA is specific to S Corps and is used to determine the tax consequences of distributions to shareholders. In contrast, the retained earnings account is used by both C Corps and S Corps to track retained earnings, but does not have the same tax implications for S Corps. Another difference here is that the AAA is subject to certain tax rules that do not apply to the retained earnings account. For example, the AAA may be reduced by certain distributions, including distributions that are treated as dividends and distributions that are not made out of accumulated earnings and profits. In summary here, the AAA account is a tax-related account used by S-Corps to track accumulated earnings and profits, and it's similar to the retained earnings account for C-Corps, 
but with some important differences because this more so deals with tax and the trip interest distributions, whereas the retained earnings account is dealing more with financial accounting and all those wonderful things on the financial exam. We've got another great example here. We have a calculation for the S Corp's AAA account. We've got all of the following transactions and beginning balances and just everything going on here. Now we're going to calculate the ending AAA balance by considering the increases and decreases to it. We have the base formula beginning, addition, subtraction, ending. That's what we're dealing with here is $10,000 of the beginning AAA balance. We are going to increase it by these amounts. It's kind of like dealing with the basis in a partnership or an S Corp. We're going to add in increases such as ordinary business income, separately stated income, and any gains on the sale of assets. And we're going to reduce this amount by any ordinary business losses, separately stated losses, non-deductible expenses, and distributions to shareholders. Now, the ending AAA balance is calculated as the following, just taking into account all those numbers there. That gives us $28,000. And just to reiterate all of this, the OAA keeps track of items that affect shareholders' basis, but not the AAA account. So in this example, the tax-exempt income of $3,000 here and the life insurance premiums of $1,000 right here are OAA items. These items would be tracked separately from the AAA and would impact the shareholders' stock basis calculations. Here, just a nice slide. Take a look at this. Great to memorize, nice and concise. Obviously, uh, what we saw was a more in-depth explanation, but something like this would be wonderful to memorize. I'll take a little screenshot for yourself, memorize it, write it down, whatever you know is best for you to help memorize. I myself love rewriting things. It's great to look at something, look at the screen, but when you actually rewrite it yourself, you know you know it because you can rewrite it from your, own, from your own memory. Hey there, are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material. We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai, where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.